Hello and welcome to Fast and Factual on First Post. Here are the top stories from across the world. Russia has charged four men of terrorism in connection to the deadly concert hall attack. A Moscow court said four suspects will be remanded in pre-trial custody until late May. It added the three of the four had pleaded guilty to all charges. Last week, armed assailants entered Moscow's Crocus City Hall and opened fire at the crowds gathered for a rock band's performance. It was the deadliest attack in Russia in two decades. The Islamic State has claimed responsibility for the attack. The French government has raised its terror alert warning to its highest level following the deadly attack in Moscow. The French Prime Minister said that the warning comes amid threats weighing on the country ahead of the Paris Olympics. With this, France is expected to step up patrols by armed forces in public places like stations and airports. Russia launched another round of airstrikes on Kiev on Sunday. Sirens sounded across darkened neighborhoods in the Ukrainian capital. Ukraine said that its air defense systems destroyed 43 air weapons fired by Russia. The attack prompted residents to seek shelter in subway stations. Ireland is poised to get its youngest ever premier next month. Simon Harris is, has secured the leadership of the governing Fine Gael party yesterday. This comes after former Irish Prime Minister Leo Varadkar unexpectedly resigned last week. Harris is expected to be formally elected in the Irish Parliament in early April. In Tel Aviv, demonstrators took to the streets to protest against Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. The protesters set fire to multiple barricades, urging the government to strike a hostage deal. Meanwhile, police officers scuffled with protesters while trying to put the fire out. Singapore's former Transport Minister S. Iswaran faces eight more charges in a corruption case. The additional charges include allegations of obtaining valuable items from businesses that had dealings with the Transport Ministry. This was when Iswaran was the Transport Minister. He now faces a total of 35 charges in the case, which has become one of Singapore's highest-profile corruption scandals. If convicted, Iswaran could be fined more than $700,000 or face seven years in prison. The Philippines has summoned China's envoy. This is to protest against its actions in the South China Sea over the weekend. The foreign ministry accused China's Coast Guard of using water cannon against a civilian boat at the Second Thomas Shoal. Philippines said that the attack had damaged the boat and injured some of its crew. Former Taiwanese President Ma ying Zhou will make his second trip to China next month. He will lead a group of students on an 11-day journey to visit locations including Beijing. Last year, he became the first former Taiwanese leader to visit China. This comes amid soaring tensions between the two countries. China considers Taiwan its own territory, however, Taipei denies Beijing's claims. North Korean media said the country's leader Kim Jong-un inspected a tank unit yesterday. The media also released pictures of Kim overseeing tank drills. It added that Kim called for stepping up the unit's combat readiness, that is through quote-unquote greater ideological and mental power. Meanwhile, Kim Jong-un's sister Kim Yo-jong had said, Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida recently conveyed his intention to meet the North Korean leader. When asked about it, Kishida said that he was not aware of the report. However, he added that a summit between the countries will be important. In South Korea, medical professors have joined the doctors' strike. They began submitting their resignations on mass starting this morning. Officials have not publicly revealed how many medical professors have already submitted their resignations. Since last month, South Korea's trainee doctors have been on a strike. This is over the government's plan to increase the number of medical school admissions from 2025. 
India has reportedly deployed 11 conventional submarines for operations simultaneously. This marks a significant milestone for the Indian Navy in three decades. According to reports, the last time the Indian submarine arm was at its highest strength was in the early 90s. In the past, India's submarines' arms were hit by a dwindling strength, accidents and write-offs. Thailand has delivered its first batch of humanitarian aid to war on Myanmar. The country sent 10 trucks over the border from the northern province of Thak. The truck carries about 4,000 packages of aid. It mostly consists of food, instant beverages and other basic items such as toiletries. This comes as Myanmar is wrecked by a nationwide armed conflict. In Senegal, counting began after citizens voted to elect their new president. Early results showed candidate Basiru Diomaye taking the lead. His supporters took to the streets of the capital city of Dakar, celebrating the early results. At least five of the 19 presidential candidates have issued statements congratulating Faye. However, main rival Amadou Ba has said that the celebrations are premature. The elections come against a backdrop of political unrest in the country. The Nigerian army has rescued students and staff who were abducted by gunmen earlier this month. The military spokesperson said that 137 hostages out of the 287 kidnapped have been rescued. This comes days before the deadline for a ransom payment was set to expire. On to some climate news now. The northeastern region of the United States was hit by a series of powerful storms. The stormy weather also brought heavy rain and large amounts of snow with it. Authorities issued flood warnings and wind advisories for New York and New Jersey. In some regions, flood water brought traffic to a halt. Meanwhile, a powerful snowstorm also hit the state of New England. Some parts of the state saw more than six inches of snowfall all over the weekend. The U.S. National Weather Service also issued warning of heavy snowfall in central and eastern Montana. At least 23 people were reported dead by local authorities after heavy rain lashed Brazil's Rio de Janeiro. The rain also caused landslides in some regions which buried cars and houses under debris. The authorities of Espirito Santo said that at least 5,000 people were pushed out of their houses due to the consistent rain. Volunteers were seen delivering aid to people in need. The East African country of Malawi has declared a state of disaster over drought in 23 of its 28 districts. The country is dealing with a drought linked to the El Nino weather phenomena. Malawi's president has said that the country urgently needs more than $200 million in humanitarian aid. This comes a month after neighbouring countries like Zambia and Zimbabwe issued similar warnings. Landmark monuments across the globe participated in the Global Earth Hour campaign over the weekend. Monuments in Paris, Sydney, Tokyo and Hong Kong switched off their lights for an hour. The initiative was started by the Worldwide Fund for Nature to encourage people to adopt zero-carbon lifestyle. On to business and tech news. Chips from the US firms Intel and AMD are reportedly being phased out of government computers and servers in China. The Chinese government has issued a guideline in this regard. The guideline also seeks to replace Microsoft's Windows operating system as well as other foreign-made database software in favor of their domestic counterparts. This comes as the United States is increasingly restricting companies from supplying technology to China. Apple is reportedly in talks with Chinese tech firm Baidu. The firm is looking to add Baidu's generative artificial intelligence model to its iPhones in China. As per reports, Baidu's AI models will be used in Apple's iPhone 16 and iOS 18 in the country. Using Baidu's AI models, it is, is ex, Apple is expected to help. 
Using Baidu's AI models is expected to help Apple soothe U.S. regulatory concerns. The United States is trying to limit China's access to the latest AI technologies. Meanwhile, Apple CEO Tim Cook has said that the firm's virtual reality headset Vision Pro will enter the Chinese market this year. The headset is currently being sold only in the United States. This is the first time the Apple executive is confirmed whether Vision Pro will launch next after the US. China's electric vehicle maker BYD has lowered the price of its new SEAL electric sedan. The price of the new SEAL sedan starts around $24,900. This is over 5% below compared to the previous SEAL models. This comes as the rising market competition is forcing EV makers to lower prices of new cars. The Chinese smartphone maker Xiaomi has teased the price of its first electric vehicle, the SU7. As per the firm's CEO, Li Jun, this SU7 will be priced below $69,400. However, Jun did not reveal the exact price of the car. Xiaomi is formally launching SU7 later this week on Thursday. A court in Spain has ordered to suspend the services of the messaging app Telegram in the country. This comes after a complaint filed by Spanish media firms. Telegram has been accused of allowing users to upload media firms' content without their permission. The Spanish High Court has ordered to block Telegram services while the allegations are being investigated. The U.S. Federal Aviation Administration will increase monitoring of the United Airlines flights. The FAA has said it will evaluate whether or not the firm is complying with its safety regulations. This comes after the carrier has been involved in over a half a dozen safety incidents in recent weeks. The International Association of Machinists District, the largest labour union of the plane maker Boeing, is seeking a seat on its board. This comes as the firm has faced scrutiny over its quality control issues. The union president has said that workers understand the, that Boeing's production system and they are the ones who can save the company from the problems it faces today. The International Association of the Machine of Machinist District represent over 32,000 Boeing workers. Oil giant ExxonMobil and Jap Japan's power producer JERA has signed an agreement today. Under the deal, the firms will jointly work on an ammonia production project in the United States. Exxon is developing a large ammonia production plant in the state of Texas. Under the new deal, JERA is likely to invest in the project. It will also annually buy over 500,000 tonnes of low-carbon ammonia from the plant. Australia's banking giant ANZ Group has agreed to settle a class action suit for over $37 million. The lawsuit is related to the interest rate charged by the firm on credit cards. The lawsuit alleges that the customers were charged interest on credit card purchases between July 2010 and January 2019. However, as per the card purchase contract, the time period should have been interest-free. ANZ Group has settled the lawsuit without accepting the allegations. On to sports now. In cricket, Gujarat Titans beat Mumbai Indians by six runs in their IPL opener in the Indian city of Ahmedabad yesterday. Sai Sudarshan scored 42, the most for Gujarat Titans. Jaspreet Bumrah's searing spells restricted Gujarat Titans to 168 for six in 20 overs. Mumbai Indians' run chase faltered towards the end and they were bundled out for 162 for nine in 20 overs. Fans booed Mumbai Indians captain Hardik Pandya yesterday during his team's IPL match against Gujarat Titans in Ahmedabad. Fans expressed displeasure at Hardik when he committed a misfield during Gujarat's innings.
The incident happened during the third ball of the 13th over by Jaspreet Bumrah. Pakistani pacer Mohammad Amir has decided to come out of retirement and make himself available for selection for the upcoming T20 World Cup in June. Amir, who, ban who, who was banned from cricket from 2010 to 2015, had retired from all forms of cricket in 2021. He only featured in T20 leagues across the globe and is now eyeing a comeback in his national squad. In football, the world governing body FIFA has cancelled the 2026 World Cup qualifier between North Korea and Japan that was scheduled on Tuesday. FIFA's announcement came after North Korea said it could not host Japan without citing a reason. FIFA said the match would not be rescheduled because North Korea could not come up with an alternate venue. Team USA clinched the CONCACAF Nations League yesterday. They beat Mexico 2-0 in the final to win the third consecutive Nationals League title. Tyler Adams netted the first US netted the first for USA in the 45th minute. Gio Reyna extended the lead after firing from the edge of the box in the 63rd. Russia's friendly match against Paraguay has been called off indefinite, indefinitely. It was announced by the Russian Football Federation this weekend. This is in light of the terror attack in Moscow where at least 133 people have been killed. The friendly was scheduled for today. In tennis, men's world number three Yannick Sinner of Italy has advanced to the round of 16 at the Miami Open. He passed a nerve-wracking test to beat the, the Dutch world number 26 Talon Greek Spore 577561 yesterday. Sinner will next take on Christopher O'Connell of Australia in the next round. The Italian has now a 18 is to 1 record in 2024. Women's world number one Iga Swiatek of Poland also advanced to the round of 16 of the Miami Open. She held on to defeat Linda Noskova of Czech Republic 676464 yesterday. With that win, Swiatek improved her record to 2022-2 this season. She will next take on Ekaterina Alexandrova. In Formula 1, Ferrari's Carlo Sainz has ended Red Bull's winning streak by capturing the Australian Open Grand Prix. Verstappen was forced to retire on the fourth lap due to mechanical problems. Ferrari's Charles Leclerc grabbed the second spot and McLaren's Lando Norris secured the third. This marks a triumphant return for Sainz, who couldn't participate in the Saudi Grand Prix because of a surgery. In badminton, Indian shuttler Kidambi Srikanth crashed out of the Swiss Open 2024. He lost his semi-final match to Lin Chun Ye of China, Taipei, 21-15, 9-21, This was Srikanth's first BWF semi-final appearance since November 2022. Srikanth was the last surviving Indian at the tournament. Comedian Kevin Hart was felicitated with Kennedy Center's Mark Twain Prize for Humor. He started his comedy career from, the op from open mics and comedy clubs of his native Philadelphia. The award ceremony began in 1998 and is named after 19th century humorist Mark Twain. This award has been previously given to artists like Adam Sandler and Tina Fey. Rapper Kanye West wants the music industry to call him Ye. The rapper's chief of staff released a letter on his behalf stating that Kanye West is Ye's slave name and Ye is who he is now. The rapper changed his name legally to Ye in 2021, citing personal reasons. Singer Sabrina Carpenter's stint with Taylor Swift in her Eras tour has come to an end. Carpenter posted an emotional goodbye message on social media reflecting on all the support that she got.
She further added that she felt very lucky to witness the magic of Taylor Swift on stage. Carpenter had been presenting the opening act in the Eras tour. Pop superstar Madonna will be performing at a concert in Brazil. The concert will be organized on the Copacabana beach in Rio de Janeiro. A few days ago, Madonna released a teaser hinting at an event in Brazil. The performance will likely be a part of a celebration tour. The dates of the concert are yet to be announced. Ghostbusters Frozen Empire has collected approximately $45.2 million in its debut weekend in North American theatres. And this takes its global collection over the weekend to about $61 million. The film was reportedly made on a budget of about $100 million. It is a sequel to 2021's Ghostbuster Afterlife. Ghostbusters Frozen Empire released on the 22nd of March. Actor Cameron Diaz and her husband Benji Madden have become parents again. The couple announced the arrival of their baby boy through social media post. The post stated that he's awesome and they're happy that he's there with them. The couple welcomed a baby girl called Radix in 2020. The agency of South Korean actor Kim Soo Hyun has shut down dating rumours surrounding the actor and his fellow actor Kim Se Ron. This comes after a picture of them went viral on social media. The agency also stated that strong legal action will be taken against this malicious slander and insulting posts. They clarified that the picture was taken long ago when the two were in this, with the same agency. Barbie director Greta Gerwig has inspired a character in the upcoming film The Fall Guy. Actor Emily Blunt, who will play the role of a director, revealed this in an interview. She said, and I quote, With the warmth and the charm, I guess there's a little Greta in there, unquote. The Fall Guy is set to hit theatres on 3rd of May. Actors Danny DeVito and Arnold Schwarzenegger will be collaborating for a new film. DeVito revealed in an interview that they are working on something. Just weeks ago, the iconic pair were reunited at the Oscars 2024 stage. They have done films together like Twins and Last Action Hero. Model Giselle Bundchen has refuted the rumour suggesting she cheated on her ex-husband Tom Brady. She called the rumours a lie. Bunchen emphasised on the fact that her connection with another man emerged after her divorce. The former couple divorced in 2022 after 13 years of marriage.